Before the Weinstein story was published, we had no idea what was going to happen. A few nights before the story came out, we looked at each other and we just said, is anybody going to care? And I think that one thing we have all felt in the last two years is the incredible potential for these stories to matter more than any of us have ever dreamed. This was never just about Harvey Weinstein. Uh, one of the reasons we wrote this book is to really take you behind the scenes and have you present with us as we went through the entire process. And it began actually with the commitment of the New York Times to reporting about sexual harassment in a variety of industries. So from the beginning, we were saying, what's going on in Silicon Valley? What's going on in academia? What's going on in factories? We were not just looking at individual alleged predators. It was always about what are the systems and processes that allow this to go unchecked? In this country, we've got a gigantic underground system for paying women to keep these stories yes. silent. We realized that our first story in October 2017 was really just the beginning, and that first story we'd been able to connect some of the dots of Weinstein's alleged predation and how he'd been able to cover his tracks, but we were so grateful to have more than a year of additional reporting in which we were able to pull back the curtain on the machinery that was in place to silence women, on the question of complicity, how was it that other individuals and even Weinstein's own companies became complicit in his abuse, and to also tell the behind the scenes stories of these brave women who participated in the investigation and two of the women who went on the record for the first time. There were as many as 12 secret settlements that Weinstein had paid and really no way for any of those women to know that they were one of 12. There were so many layers to this story. This really was like an x-ray into abuse of power and so while we had been aware of some of the surprising figures who helped bring the truth to light, in the course of our reporting for this book, we were also able to report into a lot of the surprising figures who helped hide the truth. You know, Lisa Bloom, one of the most prominent feminist attorneys in the country, who crossed sides in 2016 to work for Harvey Weinstein. She has said that she did that because she thought he only made inappropriate comments towards women and she wanted to help him apologize. In the course of reporting our book, we were able to obtain these confidential records that showed she had much deeper knowledge of the serious allegations against him and that she played a much darker role. It was a relief to finally be able to tell people what happened. A lot of what really happened in the initial Weinstein investigation was so harrowing, surprising, galvanizing, but a lot of it was off the record. And so finally in this book, we can take you through these pages and show you how everything happened back to the very first uncertain days of the investigation when we didn't know if any of these rumors about Weinstein were true. Listen, the Weinstein story is far from over. In January, the criminal trial against Weinstein begins. He is also being sued in civil cases for victims of sexual harassment or trying to get financial recompense. There are complicated and diverse feelings about um, Weinstein going into all of these uh, legal proceedings uh, and that we're gonna see those public sentiments playing out, I think, on an even broader stage once this criminal trial begins.